All right, guys, I'm back, which means that we're gonna do facial planes, and maybe spaces later. So we have superficial fascia, it is not part of the deep fascia. We have epidermis, dermis, and then this bottom layer, we, we called hypodermis or subcutaneous, but it's also called the superficial fascia. It's just deep to the skin, so that little chunk, it's just deep to it, and it surrounds the platysma, which is that neck muscle. So if we were to talk about it, it'd be from the black to the red. That'd be that, that space that we're talking about. Um, so my little, my little joke is we don't want it shallow. It's a sad face. We like it deep. Okay. Um, so just some notes. It's deep to the superficial fascia. Um, it's like connective tissue. So it's just like saran wrap. Um, and then potential spaces between fascia that is not that is prone to an infection. So these spaces can be created, and that's where infection might leak. So here's our photo or our picture. Um, so we'll go through each one. I just labeled stuff on here. So superficial or investing fascia. It's kind of annoying because it has the same name as the other one. But this is layer one. Um, it goes completely around the head and neck. Um, so from an, um, anterior to posterior, it just wraps around. It splits open to have these two muscles go through it. And it has a submandibular gland and the parotid gland um, located in, in that, that area as well. So this is that first layer. This next layer, these next three, are the middle layer or the second layer. So pretracheal, so pretracheal, it's just in front of the trachea. Um, it just encloses the infrahyoid muscles. This visceral tracheal fascia is probably the one that has the most stuff in it. it has a thyroid gland larynx trachea pharynx esophagus it connects to the buccal pharyngeal which is the next guy um, and then it it goes all the way down into the pericardium so down down our chest um, so we've gone over the red guy these openings are those muscles we have the thyroid we have that purple one the, the pretracheal then we have the visceral tracheal, which is what we talked about. So this is the one that is clinically relevant to us, buccal pharyngeal. It's still part of that middle. Um, it's posterior, so it's behind to the pharynx and the esophagus. So it's just the back of the throat pretty much when you see it, and we can see it. Um, so it's right here. Um, what's important is these two areas, the LR and the, the buccal pharyngeal, um, they have spaces in there that um, the retropharyngeal space and the, the danger space. Okay, so now we have that LR, which I just had mentioned. Um, it separates the retropharyngeal space and the danger space. So just like I had mentioned, pre-vertebral. Um, so these, these spaces are deep now. So we got that first layer, second layer, and now these are deep. Um, surrounds the vertebral column and those deep muscles in the neck. Um, that phones the posterior triangle it's from our triangle lecture and cranial nerve nine travels to the SEM and the traps okay so the last one is the carotid sheath um, and it create and it's created by the surrounding fascia um, and it travels from the base of the skull to the aortic arch so I want to go back to the surrounding fascia it's probably the important piece to the carotid is that it's created from like the wall of this thyroid and this pre vertebral one so this is the visceral one pre vertebral this is the investing layer and then this excuse me i think i said pre vertebral and i meant pre tracheal so pre vertebral right here and so technically these are all like connected there's no space between them but all those fascia they create the carotid sheath um, and so obviously we know that inside the carotid sheath there's very important things so that's Fascial planes.